Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of perspective. Um, in this video we're going to look at what to do if we have an object where no original edge of the object is resting on the picture plane. So in all the previous examples that we've seen so far, we've always had at least one face or one edge of the object on the picture plane which would present itself as a true length or true shape in our perspective image. So that always gives us a starting point um, to begin our question with. So in this question we're going to look at what happens if we have an object like this one here where there is no corner or no face on the picture plane to start with. Um, you can see here we have our 2D version, here we have our 3D version and again each corner away from the picture plane. Now from our previous examples we know that if there is no existing corner on the picture plane that means that none of our edges are going to appear true length. If the object is behind the picture plane, they're going to all appear smaller than what they actually are. If the object is in front of the picture plane, like so, all our edges are going to appear larger than what they truly are. So we're going to see how do we get a starting point, a true length line to start with. And how we do that is through what's known as a measuring post or a datum measuring post. Um, so the setup that we have here, we can just see um, I've filled in our vanishing points by going parallel to my various directions. So direction 1, direction 1 here, giving me VP1. Direction 2, going parallel from our spectator onto the picture plane, giving us VP2. And here's just the exact same thing happening in 3D. Our spectator looking in the direction of our first direction, giving us VP1. Our spectator looking in the direction 2, giving us VP2. So that's the basic setup. So what we need now to do is establish a true length line to be able to begin drawing in our perspective image. Um, how we do that is quite straightforward. We take a direction that we have a vanishing point for. So be it this direction here or this direction here, what we do is we continue our edges along until they actually meet the picture plane. So we extend on our lines until they meet the picture plane. So Let's just see that in action. Here we can see we're taking this edge here, we're moving it along. As it moves along, it hasn't changed height. So when it does hit the picture plane, this line here on the picture plane is going to be our original height. So let's for argument say, say this is a, a block of height 50 millimeters. So there's our line moving on the ground. You can see there he is at height zero. There's our height 50 transferring along. So this is height 50. So what we actually see on the picture plane here is the true height. So let's do that in our 2D version then. We continue on, like so, until we have our point here on the picture plane. So that point there on the picture plane we're going to project up and this is our measuring post, or our datum measuring post. Datum is just another word for a, a reference. So this is our datum measuring post. So um, because this point here is on the picture plane, we can mark off any true dimension onto this line here. So let's do exactly that. We're able to mark off our height 0, which we have started with where it meets the ground line, and we're able to mark off our height here, so our 50 millimeters in this example. So that's our height, that's our reference here of our measuring post, like so. So at the moment, that line there is, it is a true length, but it's not where we want that measurement to be. We're here at the moment on the picture plane, and what we want to do is transfer that back across the piece so that we can find our corner point here to begin with, so, so the first corner of our object. Um, now when we're doing this, it's very important that when we place our uh, datum point, that we place it in a position where we have a vanishing point to move it back to where we need it. There's no point in randomly placing it. Unless you have a vanishing point moving you back to where you need to be, um, it won't work. So in this case, if I want to go from here and transfer my height back across to here, so in 3D from here, back across to here, well I need to move in this direction. So following my vanishing points, that means I have to go back to vanishing point 1. So that's exactly what I do. I take my height 50 back to vanishing point 1, and there's my height 50 going all the way back in this direction here. Same way with our height 0, going back in this direction. So all we need to do then is we have our um, uh, we have our um, distances going back like that, or we have our um, direction of our height 50, so that takes care of the height. Now we just need to find the position of our corner here. So we're able to take him down like so to the spectator, and we're across the picture plane, we're able to bring it up, and you can see there's our height 0, there's our height 50, and that gives us our first corner. 
So once we have the first corner, really the question is exactly the same as any other question. So let's see it happening here in 3D, or sorry, in 2D. Again, we find the back corner. There is our face drawn in. So there is our face been drawn in in 3D. And we're going to go back in this direction to give us our heights transferred back. There's the back corner completed there like so. Exactly the same happening in 3D. Um, then it's just a case of going to each of our vanishing points and completing the question. So that is, in essence, how we get a datum measuring point. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, now, we're not limited by just going in this one direction here. As long as you have a vanishing point that can move you in um, a specific direction, you can put your measuring post anywhere you want as long as you have that vanishing point. So just to b give it that example, if I wanted to create my datum point by extending this line here, well, I do have a vanishing point that moves in that direction. That would be VP2. So there'd be nothing wrong if I extended them on to give me a, a measuring post over here like that. So there we go, like so. There will be our measuring post. And let's just put in our 50 millimeters high. And if we go back to our VP2, we can see it does line up with our edge here, our corner here like that. Um, so where you take it from, you could extend this edge here on, you could extend this edge on here, this edge on here, or as we did here, this edge on here. So it doesn't actually matter as long as you can get from your measuring post back to the corner that you want in your object because you have a vanishing point that will do that for you. Um, so that's how we get a data measuring post. One of the really, really most useful um, principles when it comes to perspective. And most questions that you'll find um, will involve using a measuring post of some sort. So um, the next video will be applying this to a, um, a practical question. So um, if you want to have a look at that, it will give you an idea maybe of how to best select where the best position for your measuring post is going to be. So as always, um, I hope this is of some help to you. Um, thank you very much and stay tuned to the videos.